There are two areas that, that should kind of characterize our focus, growth and learning, and then beyond that, growth and virtue. When I think about DeLone, I think of loyalty, faithfulness, and enthusiasm. But one of the terms that you hear when you spend any time here at DeLone Catholic is squire, squirehood. And this idea of a squire is very important to us. It helps to inform our identity. A squire, of course, is an understudy to a knight. Uh, and so our students you know, very much are squires, and they're squires with a view of becoming knights. Right? So we're trying to equip our students with a, a, a sense of, of service to others, which is the hallmark of a knight. This place is special because the students are invested. We don't have a large population, but we're able to be very active with our sports, with our productions, because the students embrace the opportunity to be involved and create their own community here within the building. You feel that deep sense of community. You feel that stewardship for each other, for the world around us. Uh, you feel that sense of belonging, which I think is really important in today's world and also instilling in them this sense of responsibility as they go out into the world and become our future leaders. I think it's important to know that sending your students to DeLone is not just a choice in education, it's a choice in education, it's a choice in your faith, it's a choice in how you want your student to be nurtured throughout their educational career. It's how you want your student to be prepared. It's a community that welcomes all sorts of different people and really comes to know who you are. At DeLone Catholic, our motto is to be doers of the word. The rest of that scripture passage is, and not hearers only. Something we talk about a lot in the Sacred Studies Department is making sure that the students are not just memorizing facts and concepts, but really taking them to heart and thinking about how they can apply these to their life as a young adult Christian, as a young adult Catholic. I think you don't really understand the gifts of this community until you're really immersed in it. There's nothing like to learn on a Friday night. I think that there is a sense of pride and responsibility that when you put on a DeLone Catholic sweatshirt, you put on a DeLone Catholic uniform, you understand that with that comes a sense of responsibility, a sense of pride. If you are feeling that nudge, you're probably on the right track to just send them, to try DeLone. My parents told me that I could go to any school I wanted and I chose Delone because I knew it would be a good fit for me and my education. I'm proud to say I go to Delone Catholic. I'm absolutely proud to be an alumni. And that being said, I'm proud that my kids are going to be an alumni someday. The best way to inform your decision making is to come and see. Visit us. Every day is open house. We welcome you to come by and to learn more about us. Once you're a squire, you're always a squire. This is Joseph Shirillo, graduating class of 2023 at DeLone Catholic High School in McSherrystown, PA. My previous school experiences didn't prepare me to become the person I am today like DeLone Catholic has. And when you enroll at DeLone Catholic, you will be challenged, but at the same time, the school community nurtures you to create your own path. DeLone Catholic welcomed me into their community and helped me become the person I am meant to be. I participated with the drama department, athletics, organized charity events, and serve in many leadership roles. All of these opportunities have prepared me for the next part of my life. DeLone Catholic also helped me to grow in my relationship with God, and now I invite you to join this amazing community. To schedule a private tour and learn more about DeLone Catholic High School, visit DeLoneCatholic.org or call 717-637-5969. DeLone Catholic, prepared to lead, prepared to serve, and prepared for life. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shepherd Gym here on the campus of Delone Catholic High School. 
tonight, Coach Brandon Staub Squires, 10 and 4, take on Jim Foster's Littlestown Thunderbolts, Area 11 and 5. I'm Tony Weaver, along with George Nieder. Uh, we'll call the game tonight. Mike Knowles on the camera. Danny Smith is our director and producer, and Luke Wegner, student interns, helping out wherever he's needed. Uh, Littlestown, George, Littlestown's undefeated in the York Adams League, and the loan has two losses as we start the second time through everybody. Now, they get put together. It's not They don't play one or two halves, but this is a big game for DeLone tonight if they have any aspirations of making the county playoffs. It is, Tony. It's a big game. Uh, Littlestown is a, is a very strong team, very senior-dominated team. They start five seniors. They got great height. Uh, it starts with Meekin in the middle at 6'8". Three guys are at 6'3", and one at 6'2", so a lot of length out there. A very senior-dominated season team playing good basketball. This JV game is getting interesting now. It's five minutes left in the JV game. DeLone had a great big lead, 20 points at one time. It is 45-40 now with Littlestown at the line. We'll break in on that every once in a while here. Now it's uh, 44. Once Mike gets back here, we'll have him go into camera, and uh, we'll do some of the JV game also. Yeah, DeLone but jumped out to a big lead here, and Littlestown has whittled this down and got hot here in the third quarter and fourth quarter shooting threes. Now, George, the league, the YAIA is one thing, but uh, District 3 is another. Uh, DeLone's a 3A team in District 3, and they're currently sitting in third place here in District 3 with a 10-4 uh, and four record. And they take six teams here, and they're way ahead of Peckway Valley, who's number seven. So I think DeLone, with even two or three wins here in the second half, is going to secure their place in the districts. Yeah, I think so. Now, I don't know about the seeds. Uh, they want to go two or three. Because one and two get a, a bye, and three and four then play a home game, and then after that, the uh, higher seed plays the lower seed. Well, right now they're positioned well, but if we take it in order, Tony, we've got the league, we have counties, we have districts, we have states. And number 10 out there, whoever that is for Littlestown, he, yeah. he hit five threes here in the second half. He is hot. He just cut it to two, and this is a good ball game. So now we're looking at Littlestown, George. They're a 4 eight team, and they're sitting in seventh place, but uh, they don't have really... Other than DeLone, I mean, it, it is, I shouldn't say they don't have any tough, they have to go through the league the second time, and uh, they have to play Bermuda, and they have to play DeLone, they have to play York Catholic again, they got to play Hanover again, they only beat Hanover by 10 uh, Monday night. Uh, if Willistown can secure, you know, five or six wins here, they're going to get into the 4A districts too, and they'll they'll probably settle in around fifth or fourth or fifth place in that. Well, for DeLone, Tony, it starts tonight with a big game here at Littlestown, and then your Catholic comes calling on the 23rd. Yeah, and we have that game right here in DCBN. And then we have a, a, a game that they're going to play out of league, but the, the new Oxford team, okay, the 27th, that'll be a great game, okay? Yeah, that still counts for district points, even though it don't count in the YIA uh, league. And then DeLone's got to travel to Bermudian Springs, and I was at that Bermudian Springs game, although we did not do it on on a live stream at Bermudian Springs was winning that whole game here in DeLone Court and uh, DeLone somehow found a way to win it at the end that's going to be a tough game and Hanover comes calling on February the 2nd and DeLone had their hands full with Hanover the other night and we have that game on DCBN also and we'll be bringing that to you uh, so we have four big DeLone boys so games we got two girls games a lot of big games coming up a lot of big games coming up the girls are uh, up at uh, Littlestown tonight we also got the uh, what, what's happening here with the girls? They're in they're in first place in 4A, even though they got beat by West Town in uh, the big tournament they had at uh, York Suburban and York Tech the other night. Over the weekend, Delone played West Town, a team out of Upper Darby, PA, and they're not a member of the PIA. They that's a heck of a drive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're just going back and forth. Yeah. And Mike's on the camera Mike. now. And we're we're giving some bonus time to our to our folks out there. This is a really good JV game. 49-47 with 2.55 left in the game with DeLone having the ball. Yeah, no, and DeLone drives to the hoop, makes the basket, and going to get fouled, they're going to go back to the line. But, you know, that new Oxford game, the 27th, that's a big night. Uh, in between games, they're honoring all the state championship, six championship, state championship teams, 74 boys, 89 boys, and then, of course, Jerry's four here at DeLone. They're also honoring Jerry's 25th year here at DeLone. Yep. And, uh, Kara Sloniker has the big uh, green shirt night for uh, youth uh, youth arthritis. So uh, big Mike night here, the 27th. We'll probably have a packed gym, and it looks like you know right now we're getting a pretty decent another three-point play possibility for the Squires out there. Well, that's a big rebound that got away from Littlestown there. Uh, the lone player grabbed it, put it back up, got made it, and got fouled. 248. 
left here in uh, the, the JV game. There'll be 15 minutes in the varsity game. We'll try to set it up a little better then. But, uh, but George, something about the – and we'll mention this a couple times tonight. Cam Keller for DeLone needs 26 points to he, become a 1,000-point scorer. He's a senior. Now, he'll get it sometime this year, but right. they made plans for the night. If he makes it tonight, they, uh, Littlestown agreed to stop the game, and uh, they're going to honor him tonight, you know, if he gets it. But my thought is if he gets 26, DeLone's going to be right in this contest to the end. Well, I think he's going to need a big game, Tony. No question. Littlestown's strong. Uh, they're undefeated in the league for a reason because they're senior dominated. They're very good. They have a lot of length in making, and we'll talk about this later. He presents some matchup problems for sure at 6 8. Yeah, uh, Chris Romick and then uh, Zion Hur, the two big scorers, uh, they're leading. If you look at the Gettysburg Times when they put the scores in, her and uh, Meekin are right up there at the top of the list. And the loan now, they have they have four or five guys that can score. But, you know, even Cam Keller is not really averaging more than about 11, 12 points a game this year. Yeah, they, they, they really spread and it Luke around. And Luke Rebert actually, the big, tall Mr. Rebert number uh, 32, actually leads DeLone in scoring to the sophomore uh, center. Well, DeLone with a little spurt here, Tony. All of a sudden, it's an 11-point game. You back up the 11 with under a minute 30 left. There's number 10 shooting again. Just couldn't get that one to go. 55. He has a slew of points for the Squires. That's Zeke Vandergriff. Yep. And he uh, probably salted the game away here with a minute 15 to go. Put the loan up 13. Did I speak too early? That's a three-point <laughs> play. <laughs> the three-point play comes up for Littlestown. Yeah, cut it. Make this foul shot and cut it to you 10. You know, as I was watching this JV game earlier, I was thinking of a, this might go mercy rule. I mean, DeLone got out there that big of a lead. They were up big. 26-9 at one time. You and, and I started doing some paperwork, <laughs> and, we, and we look up, and here comes Littlestown, JV team. Uh, kudos to those kids for not quitting and playing hard and knocking down some big shots. Well, they cut it to 10 here now with a minute 10 left. That's They put it on this press. And the ball's taken away. Lay up and good. There's eight. Cut it to eight. And we're under a minute now. Yeah, do a quick shout out to a good friend of ours that just uh, tuning in in New Jersey. Joe Clunk just uh, gave us a text. He jumped in and... He's, uh, he understands he's watching the end of the JV game. This is not the varsity game. Joe, hope you're doing well and holding up well in the cold weather. I understand he's a Packer fan. He is. He is. He's a Green Bay Packer fan. He's a good man. <laughs> yeah. I, I bet he'd be glad to know that Billy Staub, one of our other classmates from the class of 73, is here tonight. Billy Staub. Said it's his first, and he told us it's his first time in this gym since he played. Yeah. He was on the championship team our senior year. Well, the league championship. League, league championship, yes. That was a team that lost in the semifinals of the PCIAA back when they wouldn't allow the our schools to play against the public schools. We won the Catholic League that year, and we tied for the South Central League. Yeah. And, and Billy played point guard on that team, and it was great seeing Billy's here in town from Texas for two weeks. Good to see him. Squires are at the line, 60 to 52 with 47 seconds left. Both teams in the bonus here both have five fouls. If we're after... Cologne gets the rebound off that and then there's another foul. This might be a foul shooting contest for a couple minutes yeah, here. it might be. Littlestown, like like you said, uh, getting back to their starters here. Uh, Meekin and her are the scorers, but uh, the other guys can put the ball in the basket too. Brandon Clayball, number 23, Cole Rowley, number 24, and Popoff, who was quarterback for their football team this year. Good athlete, very number good 25. athlete. He's 6'3". And uh, he looks good on the basketball court. He runs well, he jumps well. They all can shoot the three, Tony, and none of them are afraid to shoot the three no. from anywhere on the court. And there's a timeout by Littlestown right after the made foul shot by DeLone. Plus yeah, I saw, the, I saw the Littlestown boys play New Oxford boys up at New Oxford, and uh, that was a, a very close game. It ended up seven points, but it wasn't a seven-point game. It was nip and tuck the whole way, and they shot. 
Well, Tony, Littles, that Littlestown yeah. had a they a sensational night shooting the ball. 50% they shot that night, Tony, and 42% from three-point land. They had shot the ball very, very well. I went back and checked some uh, on some video. There are two losses, one against Donegal, 67-55, and West York, 51-44. A poor shooting night pretty well. 38, Only 38% and 32% on those respective nights. Ta you talking to their coach earlier, he said they shot the ball very well. Against, against New Oxford. New he Oxford. knows they have to shoot because... If they're not shooting well from the outside, that puts a lot more pressure on Meekin. And if uh, the kid, uh, I I would guess Stallone's probably going to play a two-three zone, but they might try to go man-to-man. -man. Who knows? You know, I I couldn't get that out of Coach Stall before the game. Yeah, and if they post Meekin down low, Tony, they may front him and back him. Yeah, Meekin's it, it, Meekin's tough down low, but and, and maybe like almost play a, like a triangle and two. Like you said, though, he can step out and take the three. And not Zion Her, if you leave him alone, he's going to bury the three. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're, they're the main two scores. That's you know, there's no mistake about that, and you'll probably see that unfold here tonight, where Zion, her, and uh, Meekin are the other be other scores for Littlestown. Well, as we said before, all seniors they've been playing together for a long time. And there's a foul in the backcourt with 33 seconds left. The Lone JVs have a nine-point lead. Like I said, t I'm Tony Weaver, George Nieder here, Mike Knoll on uh, camera, Danny doing all the producing and uh, directing here. <laughs> so <we> just <laughs> And uh, Luke Wegner, our student intern, helping out. He had the camera the last game. Like we said before, the lone girls are up at Littlestown. There's no JV game, so a lot of them girls and Coach Jerry ought to be coming in here probably just as the varsity game's getting ready to start. They started the girls' varsity game up there at 6 o'clock. Yeah, just sort of like the Hanover game the other night when uh, there was no JV game. The league dictates now that if you don't have a JV game, the, they start at 6 o'clock anyway. Yeah, and it's a good role for the student athlete. Yeah, there's no use sitting around no. at 7, 7.30. Nope. And it, it's it's not a bad crowd here tonight. I'm On a cold, bitter night. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good crowd. It's that. Remember, uh, just upcoming games here. We got uh, next Tuesday night, York Catholic coming to town for the boys' game. And then the 27th, Saturday night, we got that big doubleheader. The girls will play first at 6. The boys will play at 7.30. In between, they honor the state championship uh, teams from Delone. And that should be a fun night, Tony, to see all those players come back from the different teams. Uh, many of them haven't been back in the area for a while. Yeah. Uh, plus, they're honoring uh, Coach Eckenrode's 25 years of service here at Delone. And, of course, it's unmatched record. Almost 600 wins here at Delone. Four state titles. The big one in... You know, the unexpected one in 2019 when they went up and beat uh, Dunmore. Big underdog in that game. A and big underdog in that game and really played well. The kids were well prepared and executed and brought home a state championship. There's no question about they're it. All, you know what? Well prepared is a good, a, good, yeah. a good word to use because they're always well prepared. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So the JV game ended up 62-54. DeLone finally won that game. Uh, we're getting ready for the varsity contest. There's 15 minutes on the board. Uh, we'll try to set it up. A little, uh, let's go over the starting lineup again for the varsity boys for Littlestown. Clayball, 23. Rowley, 24. Popoff, 25. Christopher Meekin, and you'll know who he is as soon as he hits the court. <laughs> And then Zion Her, number 32. As we said, Tony, a lot of height there. 6'1", 6'3", 6'3", 6'8", 6'2". A lot of height. And I saw Littlestown play enough this year and last year to know that if they get in a hole, they'll go to a one... Th Hello. Okay, this must be something new. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is by design, is it? What do you think? Yes? Yeah, I don't think... Uh, here come the lights back on. Okay. Okay. Well... Cam Keller leads him out. Like we said, he needs 26 points to get a thousand. Well, Tony, you know you, you you try to break this game down and you look for keys. 
you know, obviously, D Dillon cannot afford to turn the ball over. Let's start right there. Got to yeah. take care of the ball. And w when when they play this one three one zone, they put Meekin out at the top of that yes. one three one zone. And he is hard to pass around. So, well, you you can't make cross court passes with Meekin and then Zion Her. And it, like you said, six one's the shortest guy they have, and they put Meekin out here at the top. Yep. So you got to penetrate and you got to go the baseline to beat this one three one zone. Number two, Tony. How well is Delon going to rebound against this height tonight? I think that's a, a key factor. They've got to be able to control the defensive boards. Well, little when I saw the Littlestown New Oxford game, little uh, New Oxford rebounded. New Oxford's a very athletic team. New Oxford rebounded with Littlestown that night. It's just that Littlestown didn't, with the way they were shooting, didn't give up too many rebounds. Right, right. And now uh, they got out ahead and, and stayed ahead. I think Cam Keller's got to have a big game tonight, Tony. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, Cam Keller's got to have a big game. Uh, so does uh, Gage Zimmerman. He's going to have to, you know, he's in a little bit of scoring drought here. He's going to have to start hitting some. Braden Smith is going to be the defensive player. So my guess is they'll probably put Braden on, on Meekin. We'll have to wait and see. And then uh, Luke Redwood's going to have to score. He's going to have to. I know he's only, what, 6'3", whatever they have him listed at. They, I think they have him listed at 6'5", but if he's 6'5", I'm six foot. You know, I mean, yeah. That he's uh, he's going to have to play. You can make his shots inside. Yeah. They get the ball down low, they're going to have to put it in a hole because, like you said so many times, and you're going to repeat it during the game, they can shoot threes from anywhere, and any one of these guys will do it. We're going to have to come out. We're going to have to guard them because you're right. They will pop the three from anywhere on the court. Uh, I, I would like to see what DeLone does offensively if they pull Meekin away from the bucket, which they might want to try and do. Well, you know what? He's he's comfortable when he's away from the bucket, too. He, he can spot up and hit his threes. And uh, when he's inside, he's not afraid to give it up back outside to her or somebody to take the three. Yeah. As DeLone collapses on him, and that's what they're, you know, you almost got to because if he gets down low, it's it's very tough to stop a 6'8 yep. guy down on the block. Yeah, when you're 6'2. When yeah. you don't have any height, wait, when you don't have any height to, to, to speak about. Yeah. Littlestown going back in the locker room here with 12 12. They'll, they'll probably make their entrance here. Gordy Kaufman down there is uh, the head ref in the middle. He's been around for a long while. I worked with him a lot when I was a ref. <laughs> so, uh, Delone's going to be in their white uniforms tonight. And we really, this is actually the first really time we got to do the Delone boys on DCBN. Uh, other games got, uh, early in the year we had a little bit of problem with illnesses and stuff like that. We didn't have the people to run, run the things, and now we do. Yeah. So we're making up for it with four straight here with the boys. And they're all important games. Yeah, this is a nice stretch run that they have, Tony, on this schedule. As we said before, York Catholic comes in here next week. Next Saturday is the big New Oxford game. The girls' varsity, boys' varsity, which will be a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, and they got Hanover here. You know, th th they have they have most of the, I, I can't say tough teams because you can never take anything for granted, but the only one of the top five in this league that they have in the road in the second half is the Berm. Yep. They and, you know, if, if, if you're up there at Bermudian Springs, you're saying to yourself, we let that game get away from us. Yeah. We let it get away from us. We, we, we controlled the tempo. We led the whole way. And we lost it at the end. Bermudian's going to be sitting. They're going to be waiting. And they're going to be a tough out up there. Yeah. Yep. Those towns back out. Well, that Bermudian game only ended 42-40. I mean, it wasn't a lot of scoring. It was 82 points total, which, you well, know. Almost went to overtime. DeLone hit a shot with about a second to go. Willowstown's been... Uh, Littlestown's been scoring 70 a night, you know. Now that last night, actually, Hanover held them, or Monday night, I'm sorry. Hanover held them to 53 and only lost 53-41. And Hanover still has one of their starters out. Uh, they're, 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 they're a team to be reckoned with, too. Yes, they are. Yep. Down the road here a little bit. And we got that game uh, right here on DCBN. That'll be our last regular season contest February the 2nd. After that, uh, the county start, whether the lone boys make it or the lone girls probably will. It doesn't really matter. We're not allowed to televise that. That's owned by uh, Shooting Stars. They do the, all those games. But how, the, let's tell our viewers out there, share with them, Tony, how do you make the counties? Uh, the, the counties are uh, the first two teams in each bracket, the third, you know, and then they pick two wild cards, and the wild cards are the teams with the best record. 
that did not make the counties. And this, we're talking. Oh, and that's also where you ranked in the districts. They take that into consideration too. Right. The counties are completely separate from district playoff and then the state playoff. Right. Because you don't get once counties start, you don't get points anymore for right. playing. It's just their extra games, but they right. don't count in. And the, co the, ca the counties exist for the fans and exist for the players, right? Yeah, it exists. Well, I'll tell you what it exists for. It exists for the uh, three eighteen. I mean, the teams that are in uh, the lower division to show what they can do against the upper divisions. Yeah. And usually, the Delone, like last year for the championship game of the girls, Delone played Bermudian. You know, and Bermudian, Bermudian yep. won. You know. Yep. So you you never know. Yeah. Well, it looks like Littlestown's going to represent our league in the counties. Well, right now it's who's Littlestown and York Catholic. Yeah, so it, it, uh, who's going to be that second team? Yeah, because York Catholic only lost one the first time through the bracket also, and actually Littlestown beat them at York Catholic 50-48 to 48 or something like that. It was very close. So now Little York Catholic's got to come down and go to Littlestown for the second half. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing about Zion Her and, and the boys over here from Littlestown being seniors. You know, both Gage Zimmerman and uh, Cam Keller and Whitmer, they're all seniors too. They've been yeah. playing each other for the last four years. They know each other. Yeah, I was going to say, Tony, you're absolutely correct. These kids know each other. They play on the playgrounds together. They play at the Y together. They play some pickup ball games in the summer together. And when they get on the court, they get after one another and they go hard. And it makes for a great, great competition. And that's what's going to make the... Uh, the Delone Little, the Delone New Oxford game so good because they know each other too. I mean, um, yeah. it doesn't matter what the records are, you know, because all these teams are pretty decent. Yeah. Well, there's just you know, there's certain games, Tony. When the schedule comes out, you look at it and you just say to yourself, you kind of circle a couple of those dates in your mind because you know you want to play really well and play really big on those nights. And this is one of those nights, right here. Yeah. This is one of those nights, the Lone Littlestown. I want to say hi to uh, Trummer Dentistry. I, I was in there today, and uh, the dentist, with, the doctor was asking me, you know, we guys we doing the game tonight? And I said, yeah, if you tune in around 7, you'll probably hear me and George on the air. Yeah. So if he's listening, hello, and thanks for all you did today. And uh, seven minutes before, we'll, we'll turn it over, like, with a minute left to Wayne Lawrence, and he'll announce the uh, starting lineups, and we'll have the national anthem. And we'll go from there. But, uh, I, you know, I look for it. I think Littlestown's going to try to push the ball a little bit tonight. More than they more than they have been. It's going to be in it's interesting to me if they start off with a 1-3-1 one, one zone and they try to start off man-to-man. -man. And it's really going to be interesting to see what Delone's going to do on defensive end. Can they go man-to-man -man with this taller team here? Or do they have to put a 2-3 or 1-3-1 one, one zone in? Yeah. Well, we'll see what Brandon Staub's going to do, coach of the Squires, and how he's going to defend this, these matchups. Okay, um, if Megan starts to sit down low in the blocks, they're going to have to bring an extra man to guard him. Yeah, well, they play like I said, they played before up in Littlestown. It was close the whole way. Littlestown ended up winning by ten or so, I think it was, and you know, uh, they they pulled away late in that game, Littlestown, to beat to beat the Squires, and Delone's going to have to shoot. I would think pretty well tonight to stay in this game. Yeah, it, it, they, they're going to have to knock down some shots. There's no question about it. And I hope the three-point line treats them well. I think they, they can get some shots from there. And uh, if they, when they do, they're going to have to knock them down. Yeah, their open shots have to go down. And uh, Like I said, there's a pretty nice crowd, except over there in the right left-hand corner. But other than that, it's a nice crowd over here building. Yeah. See, anybody? Getting ready to go to the PA announcer here. And so we got more six more contests coming up here in DCBM. We also have a wrestling match on the first of February.
be senior night for the wrestlers. I think it's Cannerdale who they wrestled that evening. We have senior night for the girls coming up when they play the berm here at the loan. And then we have senior night for the boys coming up when they play Hanover. At halftime, we're going to turn it over to Danny. And uh, she'll fill you in on some stuff going on here at the loan. They have named the uh, Hall of Honor class for 2024. Another class of 73 mate, Steve Mathias, made it. Uh, Longtime teacher down at uh, Suarigo Su made it down in uh, St. Teresa's. Ann Kerr, who was a math teacher here at the Lone Catholic. Jack Miller, who's deceased, he made it. Dave Lawrence. And uh, yeah, the last 10, 12 years has stepped up whenever the Lone needed him here to fill in ath athletic director. You always see him and potty up behind my house in the fields doing the fields yeah anytime anybody needs something Dave's right there and he, he made it also that ceremony's February the 9th Friday night well this is a hurdle for little and I'm sure I'm sure Danny's going to be going over that at halftime to let you know yeah this is a hurdle for Littlestown tonight Tony but after this on their schedule there are two big games they travel to Bermudian and then they host your Catholic. Yeah, they host your Catholic, and that's a big game. Yeah. So. Looks like our classmates found each other. Wilburn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 2.45 left to the tip-off. Want to say hi to Marty Clunk. I'm sure he's listening down in Virginia. Jim, Jim Mern. Shout out to Pat Clifford down in Dunedin, Florida. That's where the Toronto Blue Jays train. <laughs> Pat Clifford, how you doing? I hope you're listening. Doing well and enjoying the broadcast. Marty hey. checks in with me after every game to let me know how I did. Yep, and I hope Jack Greenholtz doing well. Jack Greenholtz Sr. over there in Sherry Village who follows the girls a lot. I hope he's listening in to the boys tonight. And another good friend of ours that's in town tonight. He came to the game. Uh, Bob Nieder, no relation to me, but Bob Nieder, class of 72. He's in town tonight, came to the game. Ridge Avenue boy. Yes, sir. Good to see Bob looking good. Yeah, we, you really can't overstate how big of a game this is for DeLone. You know, if they hit three losses in the league, they'd almost have to win out to even have a shot at counties. But uh, not only that, they, they could pull off a win over Littlestown, and the strength rating might move them up a little bit in their districts. So even though I think they're going to be okay for districts, they'd, they'd sort of like to secure a home game. Everybody would like to play one more game at home. I think the girls are going to be okay getting a home game. Because all the district games before the finals are played at home. Once the finals get here, you got to go up to Hershey to play. Oh. Well, the kids don't mind going to Hershey. No, no, that, I, don't, a, I don't either. That's a thrill. <laughs> that's a thrill to play on that court. So now uh, Wayne Lawrence will announce the starters, and we'll finally find out who's starting for DeLone. We didn't really have a... Looks like we're going to get started pretty much on time. Yeah, right before he gives the lineups, we're going to do a shout out here to Coach Zortman, football coach for DeLone Catholic, listening in. Coach, I hope you're doing well. And uh, great season again this year. And appreciate all you've done for DeLone Catholic. That's for sure. He's already sent me the schedule for next year. <laughs> always working. Coach Zortman is always working, Tony. Appreciate all he does. Wayne Lawrence over there reading out the rules and regulations here. 
glitches. Littlestown in all blue with uh, gold trim. Brandon Clayball, number 23. Cole Rowley, number 24, coming out. Clayball, Rowley. Pop off, number 25. Meekin, the leading scorer in the area. And Zion Hur, who made some bones in the football field, too. Yes, he did. And for Delone. Aiden Whitmer, number 10. Cam Keller, who needs 26 points to get 1,000. There's Gage Zimmerman, number 13. Braden Smith. And is that Luke Rebert coming off the bench last there? Yep. That's who we thought it would be, Luke Rebert, number 32. So it's Whitmer, Keller, Zimmerman, Smith, and Rebert. rendition there and we'll start uh, she gave you the girl score girl score just came in the loan over Littlestown 49 15 they're on their way back thanks Corey thank you Corey you're the best Enjoy the game. So the lone girls beat Littlestown 49-15. My guess is Meekin's going to jump center. <laughs> how, would you know, how would you know that? <laughs> huh? And here we go. Ball is up. Tip, tipped around. Her has it for Littlestown. He's going to bring it up the court and get through the point. Gets it to clay ball. Popoff has it out front in the Meekin. Meekin drives, lays it up and in. Yeah, it's going to be easy stuff, Tony, if they give him that all night. There's not a lot to learn to do about that one-on-one. -on -one. Braden Smith, Whitmer takes it out front. Looks like they got a man-to-man -man for Littlestown right now. It does. Cam Keller from downtown, not there. You've got a nice by Clayball. Those are the shots the loan's going to have to hit tonight, Tony. 
Cole has it. Cole Rowley has it. Gives it back to Zion Her out front. And they got Smith on uh, Meekin like I thought they would. Yep. Her has it. Play ball. Cole Rowley, three shot, not there. Whitmer on the rebound. Very, runs it up. very important for DeLone to run down those long rebounds, Tony. Any rebound they get's a plus, I think, you know, but you're right, the long ones can go to anybody. Zimmerman has it. Rebert. Whitmer was thought about three, didn't take it. Zimmerman's going to take a three. Near rim miss. Rebounded again by Clayball. He gives it to Zion Her and up, the, up they come. Crosses the timeline. Gage Zimmerman on her. Pop off out front. Into Meekin. Meekin's going to drive. Give it up to Cole Rowley. Nice spin move. Lays it up and in. Real nice spin move. 4 0 Littlestown. 6 13 into the game. Whitmer dribbling out front. Gives it to Rebert. Rebert. Meekin has Rebert. Gage Zimmerman. Has it taken away. Taken back by Whitmer, though. Gets it to Cam Keller. Turnaround jumper. Not there. Meekin on the rebound. And he brings it up to her. Nobody stopped her. He takes it to the hole. Lays it up. Not there. Good block in there by Luke Rebert. Tony. Yeah, it was. He got a piece of that ball. Nice play by Whitmer, too. Getting there and... Getting his uh, position. Drone trying to play a 1-4 high offense. Keller has it out front. Smith. Back to Zimmerman. Got a little bit of a weave going here. Zimmerman drives, lays it up. Double dribble called. Going back over to Littlestown. Well, I like the movement I'm seeing from the Dillon offense, Tony. Just unfortunate turnover there as he's taking the ball to the hole. Her brings it across the timeline, gives it to Cole Rowley. I, ooh, I think he just double dribbled. And to Meekin. Meekin steps out, gives it to Rowley. Rowley looking good guarded there by Cam Keller. Back to Meekin. Puts it on the floor. Gives it to Clay Ball, and Her comes out and sets it up out front again. Pop-off has it now. Now they got to come down and help, which they do. Her driving to the basket. Not there. Pop-off has it out front. And Meekin again. Good defense by DeLone. Yes, it is. Pop-off's going to take a three. Got it. And that's what we saw on film, Tony. Meekin's own selfie. She'll kick that ball back out. Kicked it out once he got it in. We said that in pregame. DeLone needs a bucket here. 7 nothing, Littlestown. Smith has it out front. Whitmer. Smith drives the basket, lays it up. Got it. There's a foul. No, going to call a foul in Littlestown there. Called that foul on the floor, Tony. Good That's drive to first. the bucket. And who did who you give the foul to? Let's see. Gave number 25 pop off his first foul. Team's first. DeLone will bring it in. Knocked out of bounds by Meekin. It'll stay DeLone's ball under their own basket. 4.06 left. DeLone has a goose egg on the board here. Whitmer. Whitmer drives. Brandon Smith from three. Not there. Yeah, like I said, Tony, they're going to have to hit those shots yeah. tonight. And Meekin standing there alone under the board. Grabs the rebound. Zion Hur brings it up. Cole Rowley drives to the basket. Nothing there. Her stops. 10-footer. Not there. Nice rebound by Gage Zimmerman. I didn't know if anybody was going to go get it. He finally did. Whitmer from downtown. Got it. Got it. Big plea for him. Yeah, they needed to get the lid off that bucket, Tony. Zion Her to, to pop off. Back to her. Meekin. Pats it across. Cole Rowley has it. Drives, pop off. Nice ball movement. Clay ball got the three. Like oh. you said, George, anybody can shoot it. That was pop off? No, it was, no, it was clay ball. Clay ball. Zimmerman out front. 
Back to Whitmer. Whitmer across court to Cam Keller. Rebert way out front. Tries to back Meekin in. Whitmer's going to take another three. Got, Got it. it again. Got it. That's what they needed, Tony. It's Delenn's playing good defense. You got to pick your poison. You can't leave Meekin one on one down low. No. Littlestown doing a good job bringing the ball back out and kicking it back out for the three. Yep. Her has it out front over the timeline. Irwin. Popoff has it. Just sagging down low a little bit, which they have to do. That shot's there for Popoff. Popoff has it. Meekin takes it. Takes it to the hole. Lays it up and in. Nice drive. Good defense there by Luke. Yeah, Rebert. it was good defense, and Meekin just went over top of yep. him to make it 12-6. Yep. Rebert brings it up. Zimmerman drives. Oh, nice pass to Smith, and he lays it up and in. Uh, it's taking the ball inside, Tony, and making a good interior pass. 12-8, 157 left here in the first quarter. Zion Herb brings it up. Cole Rowley has a... Yeah. Nobody got, nobody stopped him, and he went right to the hole and laid it in. Yeah. Six-point lead for Littlestown. Missed assignment there, Tony. And now but we see Meekin out in front of a 1-3-1 zone. Yeah, Tony. There's, a, there's that 1-3-1 zone, which is very hard. you got to hit the side and then go baseline yeah, he, really quick. He comes to the ball. He's just so hard to pass over. He's 6-8. Play ball. Inside to Smith. Smith leads it up. Oh, he can't make it go. I thought there was a little contact there. Yeah, Nothing was thought, called. Fault for fouling her, but Meekin's going to look. He, he stops and takes a three. Not there. Rebounded by Delone. Yeah, might have been a little quick on that shot. Yeah, there, I Tony. don't think. I think the coach is telling him that. Yeah, yeah. And we just got the one-three-one zone back. Whitmer. It's just so tough if you pick up your dribble. Look how high you have to pass it over yeah. top of Meekin. Robert. Back to Zimmerman. Whitmer into the corner to Smith. Zimmerman has it. Keller. Good patience by Delone, Tony. They're not forcing anything. 33 seconds left. Yeah, some of them passes are awful hot. Keller. Keller to Zimmerman. He has an open three. Not there. Rebounded by Meekin. And her has it as he brings it over the timeline for Littlestown. Her from three. Yes. 17-8. Delone needs a basket here before the end of the quarter. They all shoot it, Tony. They all shoot the three. Whitmer. Got to let it fly. Got to somebody's, let it fly. Got, nobody gets a shot off. It's going to be 17 for Littlestown, 8 for Delone. Uh, Aiden Whitmer has six, and Smith has two. No, Smith has four. Brandon Clayball. I mean, the, yeah, Smith, and he only has two for, for, for eight. Go ahead. For Littlestown, Brandon Clayball has three. Rowley has four. Popoff has three. Meekin has four. And Zion Herr has three for 17. So everybody, everybody in that starting lineup scored. Yeah, 3-4-3-4-3, three, four, three, four, three, Tony. So Aiden well, Whitmer hit two threes, and uh, Braden Smith had a bucket for two, and that's where we stand here at 17-8 to eight right now. Yep. Like I said, at halftime, we're going to send it back to Danny, and uh, she'll give you some stuff that's happening here at the loan. Not a very good first quarter for the Squires. They and Littlestown shooting pretty well and moving the ball nice too. Yeah, their shooting percentage, and we don't have a statistician, but it's pretty high. They haven't missed too many threes. And Delone, as you said, not getting the rebounds they need to get. They get one shot and that's it. Delone does have the hour here, so they'll have a chance to cut into this lead. And number five, Liam O'Brien's come into the game. And he's come into the game for, let's see who, uh, uh, for Smith. Looks like Littlestown's going back to their man-to-man -man here. Start off. So Brian's in the game now. Zimmerman. Zimmerman goes, tries to go to the basket. Does go to the basket. Lays it up and in. Nice move yeah, by Zimmerman. Saw that good foot speed, Tony. And he went by a good athlete. Got there. around Cole Rowley, yeah. A good athlete. Number two's in the game for Littlestown, Peyton Bossom. 
Meekin takes it to the hole, gets it to Bossom. Bossom, a left-handed three shot, not there. Rebounded by number 32. Comes to the loan, pushing Luke a little Robert. bit. Nice drive by Whitmer. Good follow. Good follow by Gabe Zimmerman. Four points quickly for Zimmerman, cuts the Littlestown lead to five. Good take by Whitmer going to the hole and a good follow up by Gage Zimmerman. Cole Rowley tries to go to the hole. Got a good spin move, doesn't he? Zion Her to Meekin. Yep. Meekin lays it up and in. Yeah, he gets it down there, it's awful tough to stop. Whitmer again has it out front. Man to man by Littlestown. Yes, foul on Meekin. That'll be his first, team's first of the second quarter. Yeah, Coach doesn't like that type of foul, Tony. Uh, 20 feet away from the bucket. Yeah, no need and, for that. And a reaching in. Delone will keep the ball here with 6.47 left here in the second quarter. They're down seven. Zimmerman. Give it to Whitmer. Getting Lone trying to penetrate, but getting the feeling that Gage thinks he can take his man off the dribble. Whitmer from ooh, I thought he might have get fouled there, but no call. Best to get it, get it, get it back out. Yeah, you can't put the ball on the ground. That's going to be a, it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to go to Littlestown. Get it down there. You got to keep it up in the air. Looks like some of the Littlestown girl, uh, the Lone girls are back from Littlestown. Yes, they are. Zion Hur, point guard, brings it across the timeline. Clayball has it. Oh, taken away. Nice play by Whitmer. Uh, good help, Aiden Whitmer, coming to the ball. Went around Meekin there to take the ball. Keller drives. Takes it to the hole, lays it up, left-handed, got it. I needed that left hand to get it away from the big guy, Tony, and that's just what he did. A good take to the hole. Zion Hur thought about taking it. Does go to the basket, lays it up, it's blocked. I think Liam O'Brien got it and got the rebound. O'Brien with a good block inside, getting up. Zimmerman drives to the hole, lays it up. Like He's said, fouled yeah. by Zion Hur. Yeah, Gage is feeling it, Tony. He thinks he can put that ball on the court and get it to the hole, and he is. That's Hur's first, second team here in the second quarter. 19-14, and Zimmerman will go to the line for two. His first shot's up, and he got it. Cuts the lead to four. Aggressively going to the hole. And who came in there? Oh, Smith came back in, and Keller went out. Zimmerman gets them both. Uh, the foul line's going to be big tonight too, Tony. Yeah. We didn't talk about it, but the Lone's got to make their foul shots. Yeah, you don't want to leave them out there. Zion Her. Peyton Bossom has it. Oh, the ball's knocked away, and DeLone picks that up. Yeah, I don't know what happened now. I think it just came off it. Oh, no. I, no, 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 no. That wasn't a walk. But I don't uh, think he ever had possession. No. Me. And that, I mean, it looked like a walk from behind, but he never had possession. I never had possession. I think a ref should help him here. But yeah, the, you would like to see the other official help him out on that call. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to explain what he saw, but that's not what happened. And The ref should help him out, but they're not going to get it. So Meekin gets it in the backcourt. And play on, boys. Yep. Her gets it to Clayball, a nice save. Her has it back. Zimmerman's on him. Brandon Smith's back in on Meek and Tony. Rowley gets stomped there and gives it to her. Delone slacking down inside, which they have to do. Meekin has it, tries to lay it up. Rolls in. Got it. Muscled that one in. Yes, he did. 21-16, here comes Whitmer. Pretty good defense by DeLone there. Going to put Matt Grinchick in the game here. Just better offense by Meekin. Whitmer from way downtown. Got it. Got it. Whitmer's going to have to have a big game tonight, Tony. His third three cuts it to two-point lead. He's feeling it. Popoff ready to come back in the game. Zion Hur gets it down to 
Oh, they fouled him on the floor. Probably a pretty good foul there, Tony. Yeah, you didn't. He, it was going to be two he, shots if he didn't. He catches that ball. It's going to be two points. So that's Stallone's first foul of the second quarter. And who'd they call it on? They called it on Smith. His first. Pop off coming in for clay ball for on the Delone team. Robert goes out. Gretchen comes in. Her from way downtown. It got it. No hesitation, Tony. Him pulling that trigger. No, he pulled it right away. That's his second th three. And he'll shoot him from anywhere. Nice rebound by Smith. Lays it up oh, and man, in and a missed three. A tough rebound inside going up high to get that and putting it back. That was big. 24-21. Her has it out front. Look to do it again. Not there. He gives it to uh, Cole Rowley. Rally back to her. Rally. Good defense by Delone. Delone doing and a good Pop job. And Popoff has it now. Good job cutting off the penetration inside, Tony. Yep, back to her. Ken nope. Keller waiting to come back into the game. Now they got Meekin where they want him if they can get in the ball. Smith takes it away, gets the. Her step back three, not there. Rebounded nicely by Zimmerman. Good job by Delone, Tony, finding the people and getting to them. Gives it to Whitmer. Whitmer drives, spins, lays it up, and got it. What a what a move by Aiden Whitmer. Eleven on the night for him already. Delone down one. Delone, back in this game after being down nine. Delone aggressively, aggressively taking that ball to the hole, Tony. Rally. Oh, and we got a foul. It's going to be an offensive foul on yeah. Popoff, I believe. That's a third foul in Middlestown, and I think they called it on Popoff. Well, he's looking like they did. He did. He had a. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that is on Popoff, his second. Lone has a chance to take a lead here with 2.28 left in the, the half. The Lone showing the ability to put that ball on the floor and take it to the hole tonight here, Tony. Penetrating Smith. Whoa, that's a long one by Liam O'Brien. Drenchick got a nice rebound. He gets it blocked. Like to see him kick that back out there, Tony. Yeah. Instead of turning on the big guy. Yeah, he's given up a lot of height to that to Meekin. But a nice rebound. Coming up on two minutes to loan up one. Nobody in any kind of foul trouble except Popoff has two. Littlestown just called a timeout. They're first. One minute, 57 seconds left. We'll send it back to Danny. And uh, if she's ready over there, we'll give her the, the second ha uh, the halftime activities. Well, Delone doing a good job, Tony, of finding a way to penetrate and get that ball to the hole. On the defensive end, Delone's doing a real good job cutting off Littlestown's penetration. Littlestown has found Meekin from time to time, and they kicked the ball out and found the open three-point shooter. To Littlestown's credit, they've knocked down some three-point shots. Yeah, they have, it, but yeah. the Delone's defense, you, you can't fault that. No, you got to pick your poison. I think they're playing in yeah. a good, really good defense. And they're playing man-to-man, -to -man too. They have not gone to a zone yet. Littlestown showed you a 1-3-1 here a little bit earlier in the, the quarter. Her has it out front. Keller's on him now. Yep. We've got a walk on Meekin. Yeah, unforced turnover there. Yeah, I don't no, think Meekin thought he walked. That tell you the truth, I was looking away. I was looking yeah. to see who he was gonna pass it to, so Yeah, he's he's a little confused. He didn't think he walked it. Yeah, he's trying to show the ref what he did, but they're gonna stand a man to man. Delone's gonna get an offensive foul yeah. here. Hold it on Grenchik. His first, team second. And Littlestown takes over with 140 left, and Hur's going to bring it across the timeline. And they're back to their starters in the game now. Hur has it out front, being guarded closer into Meekin. Meekin gives it to Rowley. Back to Hur. He's loose for a three. Got it again. He's ice. 
Well, set play there, Tony. It starts getting it leaking up high. They set the screen, and Zura knocks down the, down the three. Smith gets it to Whitmer. Whitmer from looking to drive on clay ball. Nothing there. Gives it back to Liam O'Brien. Smith has it. Grenchik. Smith again. Zimmerman waiting to come back in the game along with uh, Robert. We're under a minute, down to 40 seconds. Littlestown up four. I know Coach Stahl would like to get those players into and the game. And there's a foul, and that's going to be Zion Hur. And that foul will allow him to get those two players back in the game there, Tony. That was That's a big play. That's her second, team's fourth. The loan down four with 33 seconds left, and that you're right, they got Zimmerman and uh, Robert back in, so both teams have their starters on the floor right now. Tony, I think the loan should hold for the last shot here. Let's see if they do. Well, they would, Littlestown went to their 1 3 1. It's going to be a hole. They've got to make good passes. Be strong with the ball. Whitmer. Oh, my. Oh, tried to get it through there. Yeah. And that's a good foul by, yeah. by uh, Zimmerman. Yep. Gage's first, team sec, team's third. Good job by the Littlestown coach jumping into that 1-3-1 one, one there, Tony. Yeah. 22 seconds left, Littlestown up four. Nobody's shooting fouls yet. And they've changed up a little bit here. Cole Irwin now bringing the ball across. Gives it to her. Her's been hot. In the Meekin. Meekin looking to drive. Gives it to Irvin. Her has it out front again, another three, and he's just dead from out there. They're up seven. That's his fourth three of the night. Cam Keller. Not there, and the score is going to be 30 to 23. That's a 13-point quarter there for Littlestown. 15 points for DeLone. They're still down 30 to 23. Uh, Aiden Whitmer has 11. Two for Keller. Six for Gage Zimmerman. And two for... Braden, uh, four for Braden Smith for a total of 23. George? Uh, clay ball with three. Rally with four. Pop off with three. You know, uh, Christopher making eight, and Zion Hurst got the hot hand with four threes, Tony. 30 points. 30 points, and uh, we're sending it over to Danny for this halftime stuff, and we'll be back to start the second half. Above all else, our community supports each other. If you come here and you put the right foot forward and you have the motivation, you'll succeed. And when you come out of here, you'll be ready to succeed at the next level. I think you don't really understand the gifts of this community until you're really immersed in it. Every day is open house. We welcome you to come by and to learn more about us. We wound up as a DeLone family because we were looking for something different for our, our second child, our son. He needed a little more structure, a little more accountability. He was pretty charming and could get out of a lot of things. He needed a place that was going to, to really make him uh, do his very best in every aspect and he couldn't slide by. At Christmas time, my husband and I were walking around the mall trying to figure out what we were going to do for his education. And we said, we just wish we had a sign for what we were supposed to do. And we rounded the corner and there was a big, humongous advertisement for DeLone right there in the middle of the mall. And so we said, that must be the sign. I like how welcoming everyone is and how genuine the people are here. I could not recommend Alone Catholic more to anyone who is considering transferring schools, coming to a new school, you know, getting maybe you're just getting out of middle school, can't decide where to go to high school. Alone Catholic is the place to choose. My brother Greg just bought one and then Hello everyone, thanks so much for hanging in there and joining us here at halftime. This is Danny Smith. Huge shout out to George and Tony and Mike for, for coming in tonight. 
especially to Tony. Today is his anniversary, so happy ver anniversary to him and Dixie. And a big thank you to Luke, who's been running the board for us here tonight, one of our um, students who helps us here with DCBN. Um, I do want to go over some upcoming live streams. We have those up on the, um, the screen right now. We uh, Weather pending. This is our schedule. So New Oxford um, Boys and Girls, that's a Saturday, January 27th. So you'll have a doubleheader that day. And the Girls Varsity Basketball, January 30th. Um, we have Boys Varsity Wrestling. I believe that the 30th, the 1st, and the 2nd for the Varsity Basketball are our senior nights. We'll get you more information on that, but you want to check it. Tune in to us and help us celebrate our seniors for our winter sports. The all school masses, we will have two in February. Um, like I said, weather pending. Everyone's staying healthy, that is. We do want to take a moment to do give a shout out to our Squires Guild members. Um, you see those names up on your screen. We can um, just double checking here to make sure. Yep, wanted to take the DCBN logo down so that you can scan the QR code. Um, if you'd like more information how to join and be a member of the Squires Guild. But thank you to Conewago Contractors, Proforma Graphics and Concepts, GNS Foods, Trummer Family Dentistry, Doug Legor Media, Hockstead Enterprises Incorporated, and Hanover Auto Team. Thank you so much for your supporting our Squires. And for other businesses out there interested, you can reach out to Matthew Thomas. His email is on the screen or scan the QR code or go to our website, DeloneCatholic.org forward slash Squires Guild. See what else is coming up here. Um, Mr. Meyer, in case some of you m may not know, um, is, is battling bladder cancer. And we have an opportunity for you to be able to um, donate and help his family through this difficult time he has been a very important part of squire nation and so we're doing our best to support him also certainly your thoughts and prayers are welcome to help him and his family get through this time um, but you'll be seeing that qr code pop up um, oh, i turned that on instead of off i want to turn that off sorry you want, you're going to see the qr code pop up off and on through the live stream when we have um you know timeouts or there's something going on so that if you see that that is the link to take you to our website to be able to make a donation if you'd like to um let's see here what else we have coming up oh yep delone thank you <laughs> luke um delone catholic is hosting the annual blood drive so you can join us here this is sponsored by the class of 2024 on tuesday february 26 from 9 a.m to 2 30. if you are interested in participating please contact dr carmen brown at c brown at delone catholic.org or visit red cross blood dot org to schedule an appointment this isn't a you know i don't know that they're doing just drop in so please schedule an appointment to come in um let's see here what we have next the delone catholic high school hall of honor is coming up again friday february 9th 2024 um we are going to be honoring susan staub Arago, class of 90 i'm sorry 81 Ann Kerr, um, she has been a teacher here and she's still a substitute teacher here. David Lawrence, class of 69. D. Stephen Mathias, class of 73. John T. or Jack Miller, Jr., class of 65. Um, if you haven't been to one of our Hall of Honor uh, programs, strongly suggest you take an opportunity to reserve your seat at the table for this dinner. They do a great presentation. Eric Lawrence and the whole team does a terrific job of putting this on. And this year, the ceremony is going to be sponsored by Thrivent, um, a financial um, planning. Uh, they, they do financial planning and, and investment. Um, met Molly, Bruce, and I haven't met Shannon yet. She is, um, a Shannon is a parent um, with a student in class of 27. But uh, so it's, it's a purpose-based company that provides financial advice and assistance guided by Christian values. So we are so blessed and excited to have this partnership and their generosity in this, this program. Um, thank you to both of them who have come together and 
and help put this event on. I'm excited for them to be able to participate in that. But uh, the Hall of Honor is, is always a great event, and I look forward to it this year. As always, um, our website is a key in seeing what com what's coming in the upcoming um, days and weeks and months. In addition to our website, you can um, download our app on the smartphone if you have one, a smartphone. My DCHS, um, you can, it's available on Google Play or Apple App Store. I love this. It's been great, you know, for the days that we're, we're here. It, Bill will ask me occasionally going, so what's for lunch today? And I can open that up and say, hey, cheeseburgers. Um, or see what the, the color day is, class schedule. If you have a student here, it's great keeping track of things. If you don't have a student here, but you want to keep up to date on events that are going on, that is a great way to stay connected. I'm going to hand things back over to Tony and George. So um, thank you so much for joining us. And I'll give it back to you. And we're back here at uh, Shepherd Gym here in the campus of Delone Catholic High School. Uh, Delone down 30 to 23 here at halftime. Thanks for everybody for uh, texting in while you're listening to the game. Uh, George, uh, it's a case of three-point shots, I guess, here. Story of the first half, Tony. Littlestown finding their three-point shooters and their ability to knock them down has been the story of the first half. I have them for six for eight. That's unofficial, okay? Uh, Zion Her has four threes. Popoff has one, and Clayball's got one. They've knocked down six of them, Tony. And Delone has knocked down three. Aiden Whitmer has all three, and he has another bucket for 11. But Nobody in foul trouble here. Two, two fouls each for uh, Popoff and her for Littlestown. Delone has nobody with any more than one, so uh, it's a pretty clean game that way, and we're going to start the second half here with the ball going over to Delone to start the second half. Hey, you got to pick your poison, Tony. You can't take everything away when you got a guy that's 6'8 down low. Yeah. You've got to come. you got to help. Littlestown doing a good job moving the ball and finding the three-point shooters. But somehow, Coach Staub's got to find a way to double down on Meekin, but make sure no one leaves Zion Her. He's got the hot hand. Yeah. Delone, their starter's coming back in the court, and, of course, it's Littlestown's starter, so... Play ball rally, pop off Meekin and her out there, and uh, Whitmer, Zimmerman, Rebert, Cam Keller, and Smith. And Cam's got to get going here. Dribbling the ball, hers on him. Driving the lane. Gets it back out to Whitmer. Nice pass. Oh. Just did it too quick. He had to pass, and shot it before he was ready. Mm -hmm. Keller got it to Zimmerman and he couldn't put it away. Well, again, They're going to get the ball under their own basket though. Yep. Whitmer takes it out front. Rebert drives to the hole, tries to go to the big guy, gets it blocked, blocked again. No call under there. The lone coach wanted a call, didn't get it. Ryan or Zion Her has it out front. Meekin, top of the key. Rally. Setting screens for her. Good job by Zimmerman fighting his way through it. Zion Her. Smith on him now. That might have been a switch. It was a switch. Gage was on Meekin. Her. Dribbles it off his leg but gets it back. Again, he loses it. Ball's in the ground. It's going to be tied up, and it's going to stay with Littlestown with 6.46 left here in the third quarter. Well, again, a good a a good uh, defense by DeLone Catholic there, Tony, on that end of the court. Yeah, they didn't allow a shot to go up. Popoff triggering it in. Her thought about it, but Smith was there. Play ball to her. Dumps it down to Meekin. Across to Popoff. He takes a three. He misses that. Ball's going to go to Delone as Meekin reached across Zimmerman and knocked it out of bounds. Well, good job by Meekin to kick that out for the clean-looking three. Middlestown got what they wanted, just didn't knock the shot down. Yeah, we'll see. He's done did that quite a bit tonight. He'll kick it out. Yes, did, yep. Not afraid to kick it out. Delone brings it across with Whitmer. 
is with Cam Keller. He's being guarded by Zion Her. Zimmerman has it. Got a count going. Drives it a hole and lays it in. Right. Zimmerman. Another good job by Gage getting that ball, taking it to the hole, Tony. Delone finding ways to get the ball to the hole. He has eight tonight. Taking him off the dribble. Clay ball. Pop off. Meekin working hard down low for his. Here comes the help. Nice move. And a good Lays it up. Yep. We're going to fall the foul on Rebert, I think, there. It's going to be Delone's first here in the third quarter. Yeah. Good job by Meekin, Tony, turning away from the double team and finding the glass, getting fouled. I think, yeah, they gave it to Robert, his first. Yep. Meekin shooting two, first shots up. No, he missed it. He'll get one more. Delone down five with 5.50 left here in the third quarter. Meekin's second shot, he got that one. Whitmer to Zimmerman. Down to Cam. Whitmer. Braden Smith. Zimmerman drives, stops, gets it back to Smith. He's going to take a three. Got it. Good job by Zimmerman, Tony, finding the open shooter after penetrating and kicking the ball back out. That's an unexpected three from Smith, who don't take a lot of those. Thrown down three now. Rowley to Meekin. Zion Her. Clayball's going to take a three. Not there. Zimmerman on the rebound. That ball was bouncing around. I didn't want to call it not there. Yep. Cam Keller back to Rebert. Rebert to Zimmerman. Whitmer takes a three. That ball but hit. Smith gets it inside and he gets fouled and lays it in. Oh, big. Fortunate there, Tony. The ball didn't find the rim. It falls into the lone player's hands. He puts it up, gets fouled, and finishes it. First third quarter foul, but that's the third foul on Zion Her. I believe they called it on her. Yes, they did. No. 25. 25. Alex Popoff, his third. And DeLone ties it with Smith making his foul shot. Eight points for Smith here in this quarter. I'm sorry, six points from Smith in this quarter. Delone tied the game. Clayball has it out front. Over to her. Rowley has it. Thinks about it. Gives it to Clayball. Clayball drives. Trying Pop to get off. that ball down low to Meekin, Pop Tony. Pop into Meekin. Popoff's going to take a wide open three. Not there. Yeah. The ball's going to go over to Delone. Well, Delone did what they had to do, Tony. They went down low to double Meekin. They kicked it back out. Got the open three, but couldn't find the Aaron. They almost tripled Meekin that time. Yep. They had they had him surrounded two in the front, one in the back. Zimmerman brings it across the timeline. Going to the hole, stops. Gets it back out front to Keller. Keller stops. A three ball, not there. Rebounded nicely. Zion Her pushing. Here comes Zion Her down the court. Gives it to Clayball. Clayball with a three. Got it. Big shot by Clayball there. Brandon put that in home. They're back up three. Under four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Whitmer has it. Smith back to Zimmerman. Zimmerman guarded by Cole Irving. He takes it to the hole. Stops. Lays it up. Not there, but he's going to call a foul on Meekin. Again, Tony Zimmerman finding his way to the bucket. Which Meek has been a key for this Delone offense tonight. Meekin's second foul, their second foul this quarter, and Zimmerman goes to the line to shoot two. He got the first one. Nine points for him tonight. He'll get one more. Second shot's up. Got them both. Delone cuts the lead to one, and here comes Littlestown with Zion Hur out front. Gives it to Cole Irwin. Littlestown ready to put a sub in here. Pop. Clayball has it. Cole Irwin drives. Stops. Gets it to Clayball. Pop off. Back to Zion Her. Her spins around, lays it up and in. What a shot. Strong move there. Great body control. Went up with the left hand and stuck it in. Comes Whitmer up the court. 
Zimmerman has it. Give and go to Smith. Ball's blocked, but it's going to stay with the loan. I'm not sure if Meek and Herb got that I block. think both of them might have got it. I'm not sure. But a good block in there by Littlestown. Pop-off going out. Number 13, Nate Albert coming in for Littlestown. Lone lining up uh, straight across the foul line as Zimmerman will trigger it in. Ball comes out to Keller. Keller loses it off his foot and it's going to go over to Littlestown. And he had a lane to the basket that time too, but he just lost a dribble. He was going hard, went off his foot unfortunately. Big point of this game. Still a three point game here, yep. Tony. With Dying her. Clay ball back to her. Irwin. Albert. Clay ball's going to take another three. Yes. Yeah. Unexpected points from him tonight also. Well, that's his third three, Tony. Yeah. His third three of the night. Six-point game again. Zimmerman. Taking it to the hole. Lays it up and in. And he's going to the hole tonight. Well, that's been working for DeLone, Tony. Zimmerman finding his way to the bucket. Putting the ball on the floor and beating his man to the hole. Albert. Irwin. They got Meekin down low. Oh, they're going to call a foul. I'm not sure it was uh, there, but kind of like Luke was pretty. Looked like he was straight up there. Lucas gets his second foul, second team foul. Meekin makes the basket and he's going to try to get a traditional three-point play. They're bringing Smith and uh, Rebecca out of the game. Grenchik and uh, number five Liam O'Brien come into the game. Meekin will try to make it a seven-point game here from the foul line. 159 left. Meekin's foul shot not there. Rebounded by Zimmerman. 1-3-1 one, one zone now. Almost taken away. Back to Zimmerman. Whitmer drives to the basket. Rolled. Can't make it. Nice rebound by DeLone. Oh, just turned it over there. Lima Bryan gets it, get, has it taken away. Good hesitation dribble. Kicked it out. Albert. Got it. Nate Albert hits a three. Not, and all of a sudden, it's a nine-point lead. Everybody shoots the three for this Littlestown yeah. team. Everybody does. Staying in a 1-3-1. One, one. Like the change up by the Lewistown coach to put him in the 1 3 1 here at the end of this quarter. Liam O'Brien takes it, lays it up. Not there. Grunchick on the rebound, lays it up and got it. Oh, that's a tough two points right there. That was big, Tony. Kind of got the sense this game was starting to get away yeah. from Dillon a little bit. Makes it back to a seven point lead for Littlestown. That's what it was at half. Under a minute here in the four, third quarter. Grunchick with a big body there, trying to lean on yeah. Meekin a little bit, be a little bit physical in the lane. Getting some minutes off the bench. Well, they got Meekin down low if they can get him the ball. Got it to core, went out front. Albert. Far away from the basket, Meekin. Looks like they might be playing for the last shot here. Uh, Arrow has DeLone getting the ball at the start yeah, of the fourth Lewis quarter. Yeah, going to pull it back out now, Tony. 15 seconds. 13. Irwin. Drives. Spins. Zion Her. He's down to five. Down to three. A long, not there. That's going to end at 44 37. 14 points for, for both teams in that quarter. Uh, Mac Grenchik has two. Right now, let's see. Uh, Aiden Whitmer with 11. Cam Keller still only has two. Zimmerman with 12, and Braden Smith with 7, 9, 10. Scoring is really well spread out here for Littlestown. Clayball with 9, Rowley with 4, Popoff with 3, Meekin with 11, Zion Her with 14, and Albert knocked that 3 down there, Tony. Nate Albert knocked that 3 down for 44 for Littlestown. Yep, 44, 37.
So we'll start the fourth quarter with Lone getting the ball down seven. They had it down to, actually they tied it, never took the lead. Remember the girls, girls won up at Littlestown tonight, 49-15. Yeah. Talk to Jerry outside a little bit. Yeah, Littlestown's ability to knock the threes down, Tony. They have nine threes, nine threes they've knocked down through three quarters. They've, they're shooting incredibly well percentage yeah, from the Glone three had, point. Yeah, has four threes. They have nine, so yeah. that's five points right there. Yeah. Uh, incredible shooting show going on here tonight, and everybody's shooting it. Yeah. It's not just one person. Delone's going to get the ball. Let's see if Littlestown, it looks like they're going to come out in their man-to-man -man here. Whitmer has the ball, and Delone has their starters back in the game, and so does no, Littlestown has Albert in there for pop-off. Zimmerman. And to Liam O'Brien. Tries to make it not there. Back to Whitmer. Whitmer to Robert. Tough sledding going in there and him. Oh, my. Zimmerman gets it on a pass that was almost picked off. Zimmerman to the hole, lays it up. Not there. Liam can't get it, and Meekin brings it away. Yeah, good job by Meekin coming down the lane, getting that rebound. Her takes it out front. 7.20 left. Albert, back to her. Play ball. Her has it again, drives to the basket, stops from 10 feet, pops it off, not there. Nice rebound by Liam O'Brien. Yeah, good rebound there, Tony. To Smith, back to O'Brien. Whitmer. Gage takes a three, not there. Ooh. Oh my. Ooh, he, oh, he was pushed. Her pushed him and got away with a push. And now they're going to call a foul down here. That's a, a real bad session for Delone right there. Littlestown got away with a push under their basket. And who they got the foul on here? Delone's first of the fourth. Clayball's going to shoot it, and that foul was on Whitmer. Clayball makes it a 10-point game now. Big turn of events there. That was a big sequence. Yeah, Liam O'Brien got pushed, no call, and they called a three-point play down at the other end. Smith to Whitmer. Whitmer has it knocked away momentarily, but gets it back. And we got a timeout by Coach Staub. That's his first of the game. 6.18 left here. Let's do a recount here, George. 47-37. Uh, Delone has not scored in this quarter yet. Uh, and they had a three-point play. Yeah, the traditional three-point play. And that's the only point in this quarter was 6.18 left. Mm -hmm. Nobody in foul trouble for either team. Popoff has three, but he hasn't, since uh, Albert came in, he hasn't been back in the game. Well, it, it's it's certainly been a game of runs, Tony. There, and it looked like uh, Littlestown was breaking away. Delone came back, cut it to two, tied the game, could never get the lead. And then Littlestown puts on a surge and jump out to a ten point. Yeah, lead. they're back up to a ten point lead, and it's gonna, you no, know, no question. This is a critical point in the game here with six eighteen left in the quarter. Delone's got to get back in it by playing good defense and, and knocking down some shots. Okay. Yeah, and Cam Keller only has two points up to this point, and. Yeah. Uh, Zimmerman has 12, Braden Smith has 10, and Aiden Whitmer has 11. Yeah. Well, Gage Zimmerman has been very successful taking the ball to the hole. If Delone's going to make a run here in the fourth quarter, he's going to have to do some more of that and, knock and, and, yeah. and, and, and take that ball inside the way he's shown the ability to do it. And Cam Keller's got to get a hot hand. But, you know, Delone's been kicking it out, too, but they haven't been making the, the baskets at the... Uh, because Gage, Gage likes to get into Rebert. Gives it Gage. Gage drives. Oh, wild shot there. No foul. Yeah, he was looking for the call. Thought there was contact. Well, there was contact, but I'm not sure I'd bail him out there. But yeah. Zion Hur has it out front. Back to Hur. Meekin, Smith on him. Play ball. Back to her. Good ball movement by Littlestown. Ball taken away oh, by Whitmer. Oh, that's a foul. Cole, yeah, going the other way. Good job by Whitmer, Tony, anticipating that 
jumping into the passing lane and getting the steal and a good job by Littlestown. Probably a pretty good foul. Yeah, he had first, easy two. Yeah, he had an easy two. First, first foul on Rowley. And let's see, they're going to take Liam O'Brien out, and in comes Cam Keller. But that's the type of defense we were talking about can get them back in this game. And now they need to score. Back into the 1-3-1. One, one. Oh, tried to get it to Reber, but Delone gets it back. Uh, good. Gage Zimmerman goes to the hole, just like you said, and lays it in. Yep. He has 14, cuts the lead to eight. Well, Gage Zimmerman's playing a tough game tonight. He's very aggressive taking that ball to the hole. Well, once you get Meekin out front of that 1-3-1, one, one, if you get the ball down, you got to take it to the hole. Yep. Clay Ball thought about it, gives it back up to Zion Hur out front. Five minutes left here in the game. Delone down eight. And the Meekin. Meekin's fouled. Yeah. It's a good call. And let's see who got the foul. It's Delone's second foul from this quarter. Who did they give it to? Number 32 got that foul. That's Luke Rebert, his third. Yeah. He gets the ball down there. There's not a lot Delone's going to be able to do. He can shoot in two. He hits the first one. He'll get one more. Remember, next Tuesday night, we're here for the York Catholic Delone boys. And then the Saturday, the 27th, the big doubleheader with New Oxford. Delone down 10 now. And here comes the 1-3-1. Zimmerman takes it. Gets the cross court. Whitmer. Whitmer drives. Picks his dribble up. Gets it back, gives it to Zimmerman. Zimmerman to Smith. Smith tried to get it to a cutting Keller, but overthrew him. Going to turn the ball back over to Littlestown with 4.29 left here. Littlestown hurt. Very patient. I think you're going to slow it down just a bit here, Tony. Yeah. They've been pretty patient all night, really. Timeout, Littlestown. Yeah. Littlestown's second timeout of the night, and I think that's what the coach is going to tell them. Because with this new foul rule, Delone only has two fouls. They need, you know, to be shooting. They need to have two more, three more fouls yeah. before they shoot. So Delone only has two points here in this fourth quarter right now. Gage Zimmerman going to the hole, and uh, I don't look for Littlestown to come out of that 1-3-1 one, one zone because that does slow down your offense a little bit. Two games next week, the Delone boys play in... Uh, York Catholic here Tuesday night. We have the doubleheader with New Oxford, and then the following week we got the girls coming back on also <laughs> against the Berm and uh, the boys against Hanover. Tony, we don't have anybody keeping stats, but I, I can only recall that Littlestown might have missed two threes tonight, maybe two. Yeah, two or three. They, you know, so they're, they're shooting between 70 and 80 percent from mm. the three point line. Yeah. And that's certainly a big difference in this game, no question. Littlestown will keep the ball here with 4.14 left in the fourth quarter, 49-39. Ball in the backcourt to Zion Hur. Zim Zimmerman on him. Into Meekin. Meekin spins, lays it up. Not there. Taps it around and gets the rebound. Just playing volleyball down there. They got to call that on the floor. Yeah. He was pumped. Bumped. Uh, the foul's on number 21. That's Smith, his second. Team's third. Back out to Rally. To her. Her's going to take a three. Now that surprised me, that shot right there. That's yeah. going against Meekin. He's playing through the defender. 
Meekins gets his third foul. Second of quarter for Littlestown. Good job by yeah, Box. That was a good unexpected shot there. Yeah, unexpected shot and a good job boxing out. Yeah, he got his hand on that ball. Keller drives it. A hole lays it up with his left hand, and he got it. Yeah. That's his fourth point of the night. Good job again by DeLone by attacking the basket, Tony. See if they can make a run here late. Cut it to eight. Zimmerman. Her go to the basket. Brings it across the baseline. Another shot that didn't go in. That was by number 13, Nate Albert. DeLone has a chance to cut more into the lead here. Whitmer drives, lays it up, and he's going to be... Oh! What do you call? Called an offensive foul. Called a walk, I think, didn't he? Yeah, walk, I guess. Yeah. Wow. I don't think that the Littlestown coach was happy with the last two shots they got down here on no. the San Tony. Okay, I think he's looking for something down low, a little closer to the bucket. Jalone calls their third, second time out of the evening. Now coaching staff's talking it over what they want to do, what kind of offense they want to run. Yeah. Gun. Cut this to eight <laughs> and a critical turnover down there, yeah. Tony. You know, you called a walk. I thought they had a foul, but thought we probably walked before the foul. Yeah. Forty nine. 41, relatively low scoring game. Delone lost by 10 up to Littlestown back at the beginning of the year. Delone girls won 49 15 up at Littlestown the night. I've got to believe if I'm in that huddle for Littlestown, they're going to want to get that ball in Meekin's hands down low. Tony. Yeah. That's what I expect to see. Talone starters on the court. Let's see who Littlestown sends out. Her, Rowley, Meekin, Clayball, and Albert in there for pop-off right now. Albert seeing some minutes tonight. It looks like Talone's going to have a little press here, Tony. Yeah, you almost got to do something now. Maybe a 2 one press. They get it across the timeline. Ball's right. taken away by Zimmerman. And DeLone got what they needed there. He got the turnover. And he's fouled going to the basket by Albert. Let's see. That's the third foul. Albert's first. Well, good job by you DeLone taking that ball to the hole, Tony. Yeah, well, you got it. You can't wait around to shoot. You got to get the ball up. Yeah. Keller's going to shoot two here for DeLone. First one's up. He got it. Back to the lead what it was at halftime. So DeLone's played him even in the second half, but that's not good enough. They got to cut into this here. Keller's second shot. Got them both. Got this game down to a six-point game with Tony. Six with Dillon's going to stay in the press. See if they can get another turnover. Herb gets it into the front court. Albert back to Meekin. Oh, Three-pointer, not there. Ball, long rebound, came back out to play ball. Yep. And that's going to happen on three-point shots on long rebounds. It really... Play ball had to know. I'm surprised he shot it. I was surprised, too. Meekin, 224 left. He can give it back to play ball. Nobody on him. Now he's picked up. Her takes it to the hole. Meekin has it now out left side. Her comes and gets it and sets things up out front. We got a walk on Albert. Got the ball in the corner and called a walk. 203 left. There's right. still plenty of time for Delone if they can make something here. Pick that pivot foot up, Tony. They can make this a one possession game. They can down and get a three. Yeah. Back to the 1-3-1 zone. Not there. Rubber had a good look at it from 14 feet. And was a good look. Was a real good out. look. Yep. Just couldn't get it in. 
Meekin spins, goes to the basket. Albert's going to take a three. That's not there. Rebounded by DeLone. Coach Yell, what are you doing? Time out DeLone. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised by these threes here. I know they knocked a lot down early, um, but I thought they tried to salt this game away by getting the ball inside a yeah, little they, bit they don't more. Really, they don't really need them right now. Yeah. DeLone has the ball. Time out. 127 left. The hour favors Littlestown. Well, we said. Both teams with three team fouls. DeLone can get back in this game, obviously, by playing good defense. They've got to turnovers. They've got some rebounds that they needed. They've and they had a nice look from 14 feet there. It just didn't go. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Again, thanks, everybody, for listening. Remember, we got six more events coming up in the regular season. Try to follow DeLone boys and girls in the playoffs. Not the county playoffs, but the districts and the states, if they're lucky enough to, to advance. Well, Tony, I think it's got to be, I think it's got to be Zimmerman, Keller, or Whitmer who's going to do the scoring down here on this end. We'll see. Yeah, Saloon has their starters in. Littlestown has their starters in, except for Nate Albertson for a pop-off. Saloon gets it. Looks like Littlestown's back to their man-to-man -man now. Yes, they are. Nice drive, but he over uh, just couldn't finish it. Well, he overcompensated for Meekin being there. Yep. Put it up too high. Dying her. Trying to get away from Zimmerman. Zimmerman's going to get the foul. His second. Team's fourth. He almost got a foul. I mean, Willstown's a very good foul shooting team. Yeah. 107 left. The lone two possession game. Into Meekin. Meekin spins. Oh, the ball. Oh! Crowd did not like that call on Smith. Well, fifth third, team fifth. Looked like he had a lot of ball here. Yeah, it looks it like did. he had a lot of ball. Yep. And uh, I saw the arms coming up, you know, so. But. Meekins two shots, got the first one. I'm not sure he thought he was fouled. One more. You can second shot. He got them both. Got a nice stroke from the line. The big guy's got a nice stroke from the foul line. Makes it an eight-point game. Delone can't. Delone has to score. Keller goes, takes a 10-footer, rims it out. Not there. Meekin on the rebound. Foul on Delone. That's going to send him to the line for one and one. Yep. Needed to get those last couple shots to go down. They just couldn't get him in the hole. Yep. Delone's over the limit now. And who they call? They called it a number 10, Whitmer, his second. And Meekin will go to the line, 4-2. Littlestown up eight. It's going to be very hard for DeLone to come back now. Meekin's first shot rolls out. He'll get one more. You jinxed him, George. Well, he's got four <laughs> points from the line in this quarter alone. Second shot's up. Got that one. Nine-point game. Keller. Whitmer. Smith from downtown rolls out. Yep. Play ball on the rebound. And Cam Keller fouls his first. Zion Hur will go to the line for two shots. Well, DeLone needed to hit those shots tonight. They couldn't get all of them to go down. Give Littlestown a lot of credit shooting the three. And the big guy's just got an intimidating presence and just changes shots on the defensive end. Yeah, and he did when Gage Zimmerman's last try to the basket there. Yes, he does. Zion Hurst shot, got it. He's up, they're up 10. Looks like they're going to stay undefeated in the league. DeLone's going to drop their third league game. Got it, makes that game against Stuart Catholic next Tuesday look awful big. <laughs> Keller from way downtown, not there. Smith gets it and lays it back in. Timeout to loan. Timeout to loan. Cut it to nine. 33 seconds. Smith has 12 in the night now. Yeah. Well, strong, real strong game. Scoring game and floor game. 
by Zion Hurd in night 20 with 16 points. Of course, the big guy is always going to come home for you. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 points yeah, that, on his it's part. It's usually her, her and uh, Meekin who lead the way, but they yeah. got a lot of scoring from the other guys yeah, tonight. Yeah, Brandon Clayball, Tony, sitting on 13 points. I mean, really good distribution of scoring. Littlestown playing a real good overall strong basketball game here tonight. Yep. I like the way the coach switches defenses up every once in a while, too. He yep. He throws that 1-3-1 one, one and really quick, and the players well coached know where to go and know how to set it up. Delone's going to try their own little zone press here right now. Zimmerman gets the rebound. Can't uh, make it uh, go, though. Uh, just a little too hard. Yeah. Read, read it beautifully. Got into the passing lane. Got the still. Just couldn't get the shot to go down. He's going to yeah. send, I think, Zion Hurd to the line again. Engage has played such a good game here tonight. Yeah, tonight. and Put he just the, putting the ball on the f on the floor, taking it to the hole. Cam Keller gets his second foul. Yeah, they, they they got what they wanted, and just couldn't make the ball go down. Yep. Zion Hurst shot got it. 55-45. Just 25 seconds left. Second shot. This is going to help Littlestown in the 4A uh, districts also. Yep. Keller brings the ball down, spins out, gives it to Whitmer. Zimmerman from downtown, not there. Smith tries to knock it away, but Meekin comes up with it, and I think they're just going to, oh, they call walking. Meekin walks with eight seconds left, and that's going to be it here. And Zimmerman's going to get two more. That's going to be the final here, 56 to 47. Let's give you a rundown of the score here. Uh, Mac Grinchick with, Grinchick with two. Aiden Whitmer, who had 11 early, gets 11 for the game. Cam Keller gets six here. Uh, 16 points high score for Delone Gage Zimmerman, and 12 for Braden Smith for a total of 47. Tony for Littlestown, Brandon Clayball had 12, Cole Rowley had four, Popoff had three, they were early. Meekin had 16, Zion Hur had 18, and uh, Albert chipped in with three. So a big strong game tonight by the big guy, Chris Meekin inside with 16, and uh, Zion Hur, great floor game and great shooting game, distributing the ball, 18 points on his part for a total of 56. Yeah, DeLone cut it to Sloan tied the game at 34, couldn't get the lead, and then came back at him one more time, but uh, run by Littlestown put this game away. That's going to be all from uh, Shep Jim here tonight. Remember, next Tuesday night we have York Catholic coming in, and we'll have that game for you right here in DCBN. And then Saturday the 27th, the big doubleheader, New Oxford, Delone boys and girls, plus the ceremonies for the state championship teams and for Jerry and for Kira Sloniker's Green Jersey Night. Great effort by Delone Squires tonight, Tony. Uh, just a little bit stronger team I think they were facing overall by the strong Littlestown squad. I'm Tony Weaver for George Neer, Mike Knoll, Danny Smith, and Luke uh, Wingert. Good night, everybody, from DCBN.